morning, everyone. Um, Good morning, Lawrence. Great, great to see you all. Welcome back to some uh, uh, some regulars, and and welcome to uh, everyone. Um, this is going to be our last discussion uh, until the fall. Oh, no. uh, we'll be uh, on vacation over the summer, and we will start again uh, in the fall in September. Marita, is that yes, absolutely. Good? We don't have a, we don't have a date yet, but that's that's my my fault as usual. <laughs> um, you get to travel somewhere nice. Uh, maybe. Don't don't know yet. Um. Uh, hope so. And um. Oh, great! They're uh. What a this is a great group this morning. Um. Is anyone else waiting to get in? I think we've got a few others who've just come in. Yeah. <laughs> but I will see uh, yeah. Ted Clausen just put something really lovely in the chat that oh. said, um, uh, oh, uh, let's see. <laughs> I just saw it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm not good at, at catching the chat. Um, I was yes. wondering the same. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't find it. Oh, uh, if you go, you want to read it, Marita? Sure. It says um, uh, Ted wrote, "What RX would anyone recommend for the upcoming symptoms of withdrawal?" <laughs> so it'll just be two sessions that we will miss, and and I think we'll be so excited to see each other uh, in September. But yeah. Our library is going to have summer hours, so we're going to only be open in the mornings um, on Saturday, and we'll have fewer people. So uh, that uh, caused us. <laughs> and then Ted's response was, two is too many to miss." So and this is a, a a feeling. I think we all agree that we love this program, and and. Uh, Lloyd, you've brought some beautiful uh, discussions to us. So. I think we'll all be excited once we come back in September. Well, I I I I I love it too, and um, uh, I, it's just been um, it's just been wonderful. Um, uh, talking about poems with all of you, and and um, uh, my. Uh, my official duties as uh, the Somerville Poet Laureate have been renewed for another year. So, um, I mean, I think we're just going to keep doing this anyway. But, but, but it's 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 still official now. Oh, great! Oh, congratulations! Um, I I I suspect everyone is just too tired to go around looking for. <laughs> for a new for a new one <laughs> and we all know we have a saturday date which sometimes one is so afraid of not having <laughs> oh. <laughs> right <laughs> so we have we haven't done a poem by Seamus Heaney yet in the entire series of discussions and um this isn't this isn't the cheeriest poem to to send us off for the summer on, but um, it I I think it's a uh, it's a wonderful poem, uh, early earlyish poem by by uh, by Seamus Heaney uh, called Midterm Break, and let me let me read it to you, and then we can talk about it. I sat all morning in the college sick bay, counting bells, knelling classes to a close. At two o'clock, our neighbors drove me home. In the porch, I met my father crying. He had always taken funerals in his stride, 
and Big Jim Evans saying it was a hard blow. The baby cooed and laughed and rocked the pram when I came in, and I was embarrassed by old men standing up to shake my hand and tell me they were sorry for my trouble. Whispers informed strangers I was the eldest, away at school, as my mother held my hand in hers and coughed out angry, tearless sighs. At 10 o'clock, the ambulance arrived with the corpse stanched and bandaged by the nurses. Next morning, I went up into the room. Snowdrops and candles soothed the bedside. I saw him for the first time in six weeks, paler now, wearing a poppy bruise on his left temple. He lay in the four-foot box as in his cot. No gaudy scars. The bumper knocked him clear. A four-foot box. A foot for every year. Beautiful reading, Lloyd. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, any sort of first responses to the poem before we look at it in in detail mary um yeah i just um just a very simple thing but one of the things that i like about the poem is the way that it insists on being read more than once at least for me the mystery kind of takes center stage through the first reading in my experience um and then the second time it it all becomes so incredibly clear and it's it's so poignant. But I like I like the challenge that he gives us there and the way he makes us work with it. It's not an easy poem emotionally. Yeah. Nothing very direct about it. Everything is kind of talking around the 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 the, 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 the central the central uh, story. Yeah. John. Yeah, <clears throat> some time ago I read a um, interview with Ewan McEwen, uh, the British author, and he was a wonderful writer. And one of the things he had to say was that uh, the key to setting a plot or narrative is to withhold information, which is also true for poetry, you know, as this poem shows. And so it's a device to sort of suck you into the into the poem to become a participant in it. And so it, the poem is incredibly effective at doing that. And the, and the surprise at the end is really a surprise because you're kind of inferring that it's a parent or an elder, an elder in the family. And the clues just um, are, 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 start to arrive. Yeah. And, and then they're heartbreaking. The, the four foot box, you know? I mean, that's really when you absolutely know that it must be a, a younger brother. I, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about the, the poems that I've chosen over, over these last few years and how many of them really depend on the last line of the poem. That so many of the, I, and I, I just noticed this myself, and maybe this is just true about poetry in general, that uh, so many <clears throat> poems really just sort of build in a kind of inexorable way to a last line that's really devastating. Um, I'm thinking of, you know, the the day lady died um and and the you know our 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 controversial uh poem from last time the robert bly sleet storm on the Merritt parkway which ends and no one agreed <laughs> and how how much and and we didn't agree 
but how how important that last line was to the whole poem and that's I, I think that's very true of this of this poem and maybe it says more about me than about poetry ted yeah since we're talking about how this information was gathered and sorted and presented for some reason earlier this morning i made a list of the actions in this poem and i'm just going to read you the list and okay. then maybe something happens and maybe something doesn't yeah. sat drove met saying cooed and laughed and rocked came in standing up shaking hands telling me whispers held my hand coughed out arrived staunched and bandaged up to the room he lay knocked and there's no there's no verb in the last line yeah you, you haven't you haven't does that add up to anything for you does it do those actions suggest anything to you about the shape of the palm or well the first two actions sat and drove are kind of quiet actions and then met saying cooed and laughed and rocked start to become louder actions came in standing up shaking hands telling me so we're we're gathering a kind of community of people and then suddenly they're whispering which takes it sort of down a notch again held my hand a moment of great intimacy a coughed out arrived staunched and bandaged which is so visceral you can just feel it on your skin and when you get to the word knocked you're knocked that's a word you did not expect in this poem so I do feel that there is a kind of a journey in these actions here that's that I think that's why I made the list right thank you yeah that's very interesting I I I I I I, I hadn't I hadn't done that sorting out on my own and that and it's very mm. interesting I think there's one verb that you missed oh I'm sure there is <laughs> uh, but the second line knelling oh knelling yeah oh yes oh my god that's really important oh well my bad here you go now that that is that is an important uh uh that is an important uh word in 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 the palm isn't it um it's what what what's so what's so good about that word in the second line what it's a few word knelling it's a funereal word yeah yeah and it's uh it's foreshadowing it's a literary device he's foreshadowing what's to come in the poem is it is it just foreshadowing it also sounds yeah well it, it seems to it's me it's also those... kind of specific yeah uh, the curfew knell the toll of parting day yeah right yeah. right and that and those i mean i i can hear the sound of those bells and and even if the poem went in a completely different direction, that would still be a great word for for those, you know, those those solemn, somber, uh, you know, bells at 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 institutions. And um, and knelling goes with knocked. Yeah. Yeah. Visually, at least. Well, right like a yeah. lot of the choices in the in the poem they're also withholding what they're there for and to, and, until the narrative builds one yeah. thing i thought was um really interesting on coming back to the poem again was the title yeah also Everything was in a way slightly misleading about what kind of poem this was until the first hint really late, I think. I mean, you can see it as hints after you've read it once, but they're building something that you're not expecting yet. 
but midterm break sort of brilliantly misleading in a way and only slightly um, double entendre. You know? Right, Slight, slightly, but definitely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, beginning in the sick bay, um, presumably, I mean, I think you read that first line and you think that he's ill. And that turns out, I think that turns out not to be the case. That this is hmm. just a kind of waiting area. Oh, it's a place to put this little boy. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting for him to be picked up by the by the neighbors and presumably taken out of class because there are classes going on, but he's not in them. Yeah, and you become a separate creature in this poem, the speaker, right. and um, removed and suspended the way the poem is suspending. Well, it's interesting to me in the, uh that he's sitting there counting bells and there's no either there or anywhere else in the poem there's no mention whatever of any memory of the child that's died there's, there's no hint about that and so this is a i read it as a, a teenager who is is focused on himself and used to thinking about his own uh needs and issues and it, it he's a little kind of both stunned and bored uh, to have this new set of circumstances thrust on him. But he's also avoiding thinking about it. Yes. Uh, now, he's he's not necessarily a teenager, is he? I mean, a, a college means something different in Ireland than here. So he could be six or eight. Oh, he was 14. Oh, he was 14. Sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hi. Yes. Hi. Does he, well, a couple of comments. Does he even know why he's being picked up is one question I have. And I'm struck by the precision of two o'clock in the first, in the first stanza and 10 o'clock when the ambulance arrives. The precision of that, I mean, really, who cares what time it is, but he does care. I don't know. It, it was uh, fascinating to me. And also that he never mentions his own feelings. Everybody else's, except his embarrassment. Embarrassment, yeah. But that's it, that's it. Yeah, yeah. there's some, I, uh, did, did someone, someone say avoidance? I mean, there's some way where he's really, he's really, <laughs> trying not to think about what he's there and and he may not know and you're 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 right he may not know that he's been taken out of class he's sitting in the in the in the sick bay and he's maybe not sick and waiting for someone to to take him uh to take him home although I think he knows because of the things that he's observing when he gets home. Catherine. And if, if, if he, he would wonder why a neighbor was coming for him rather than a parent. And, you know, usually your parents pick you up at term break. And so he, he had to have known why it was not a parent coming. Right. Right. And, and you don't know if the parent is the is the one that he's going to see. Yeah, I and because because of what the um, big Jim Evans, I had assumed it was his mother who had died. Right. Well, you we, until we, until we get to her, she held my hand. It's not right. not, not dad, not, not mom. Her. Working through yeah. the family, and the I think the clue the is that he was the oldest. 
Right. And we see the baby. Right. So it's somebody in between. Someone in between. All right. Right. As, as we talk about the poem, I'm more and more the line, <clears throat> the baby cooed the, the, and laughed and rocked the pram leaps out. <clears throat> <coughs> Everybody in the poem <clears throat> is responding to a death or a, right. the bit, but the baby has no idea. The baby has no idea right. what, the, what the human condition is. The yeah. baby is completely outside it. Um, right. And the adults, there's, there's something kind of askew about I met my father crying. He had always taken funerals in his trouble. Well, this just isn't a funeral. His child has died. And the old men who shake his hand, you know, say that, and in fact, he puts it in quotation, say a cliche. I mean, everybody's sort of helpless, of course, in relation to the actual event. But the obliviousness of the baby is all of our starting point. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, Lloyd. Yes. The detail about the baby is, and, and cooing is absolutely brilliant because it's uh, Heaney's way of sort of twisting the knife into the reader's stomach, <laughs> of it showing here it is. He's totally no idea what's going on, and he's cheerful. He's full of life. And, and, and that's the irony and that's the beauty of that, of that detail, which points out uh, <clears throat> to my favorite adjective in the poem is Big Jim Evans. And, huh. you know, it's a great little detail, but I just interpreted that as he's big, which is something that his brother who died will never be. And so that has, you pick up that rock and there's something swarming under it. And, you know, it's just, you know, brilliant writing. By, by Amy I mean, the, the, I, 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 I think I'll, I'll explain when, when I get to it. But um, I think if I had to pick my favorite word in the poem, it might be the. <laughs> huh? <laughs> the, yeah. And you'll see. We'll, you'll, you'll, you'll see. Yeah. Uh, when are you going to explain that? When we get when we get to it, when we get to it, he's withholding for maximum. I am withholding the yes. That thank you, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. There's uh, one. There's one. There's one thing, Lloyd. I wanted to mention Michael, while John. while John was talking about Big Jim. Uh, one, one thing about the last line that struck me is four feet for a four year old is big. And I mean, that's nitpicking and poetry really hates nitpickers in that sense. But, well, um, but to it's come the back box, to- It's the box that's four feet. It's the casket that's four feet. It's not the okay, child. Okay. So that may be the smallest casket well, you could, well, may, probably not, but- A foot for every year. I just wanted to mention that it's something you could turn back around and think that in a sense, <laughs> death does make one bigger, um, certainly right at the beginning. And um, and so it, it would it makes sense to me, although it's not impossible for a four year old to be four foot tall. It's it's the measurement a foot for every year. It's it's beyond. But I think symbolically. When you go to death to another, you become larger. So it, it's one of those detail things that you don't have to, you know, you don't have to take apart the poem for that. It's, it's a very neat ending for a foot for every year. But it seems to me there's something gargantuan about, about this, even though he's completely unspoken of, nothing, no details about the child. And then one last thing, the sick bay at the beginning that we talked about reminded me of Stephen Dedalus, um, huh. who's often in the sick bay in, in his school when he's young. And and it echoed for me uh, uh, uh you know from from Joyce to to uh to Haney. So yeah. Um 
Yeah, I, 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 that, 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 that's a, that's a very, I, that seems to me a very good association. I, I, I think now, what, now that you mention it, I, I, I feel it too. Um, Susan, you had your hand up a m moment ago. Susan Levin? No? Okay. Um, I'll mention something, um, unless there is somebody else waiting to talk. Michael, go ahead. Um, I was moved by the poem because it associated itself with things on my in my life that had happened to me. And they're idiosyncratic things like remembering when I hit four feet um, in a, a Y and a very old lady who was also four feet. And we were joking about she had shrunk to where I had grown. But I'm wondering if that's part of the genius of this poem is finding things that would echo with many different readers, even if they're not the same thing. Yeah, I'm 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 sure that's that's true. I'm sure that's true. Uh I certainly um um you know I I I respond to these the, these details. Um uh well also yeah. the pathos of a four foot box is really that the body inside it isn't even four feet. Right. You know, so we're not talking about a four feet child. We're talking probably out of three foot right. body. Yeah. Yeah. Four feet is small enough, but when you when you when you suddenly hit with exactly what's happening, the the pathos is even greater. Right. I am uh, thinking that oh excuse me. Go ahead. Ahead. Ellen, please. Um, the sorry for my trouble in quotes. There's so much that to me indicates the awkwardness of, of the speaker and this teenage boys, you know, just you know, they're whispering, he's the eldest, and the all the observations feel so awkward in the face of this enormous event. And and just the last line feels like it's it's as close as he can come to seeing the the real tragedy of what's happened here, and and so stark and. Yeah. I I I I I yeah. I, I, um. Let's let's go back to the to the second stanza for a moment. Uh, in the porch, I met my father crying, and that's that's really that's a very startling transition from at two o'clock our neighbors drove me home, and then so he's he's observing that and he knows what time it is, and then. There's this suddenly something much harder to take and harder harder to take in uh, of seeing his father crying, which he had always he had always taken funerals in his stride. So you know this is this is someone I, I get the image of someone who doesn't show his emotions very often. And and here he is crying, and that we know it's a funeral, but we don't know who has died. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And the uh, and the death of a of, of somebody's toddler is is nothing you prepare for. Right. In a way that you right. that little part of you is preparing for the loss of your parents. Or your grandparents, you know. Right. And uh, yeah, and big Jim Evans saying it was a uh, Catherine. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's so Irish in so many ways. 
um, the whole poem. I, I, I had two questions. One, is it true? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. The word, the word that I liked particularly was the snowdrops and candles because it's spring and and the person who's died was a spring, you know, was young. And that's all a sort of picture of a too soon before before it got to be summer, you know. And besides that they, they would be growing around anybody's house. They would be there. Huh. Yeah. Okay. I don't know enough about I know so there are I know they there's precede, spring flowers. They precede daffodils. Right. So they're I see. very early. I see. Okay. Good. Um they also oh, have a, oh sorry. Yeah, Ted, please. Oh, it's just a small thing about snowdrops. Um the blossoms are very tender and they're pointed down, not up. And they have a quite remarkable fragrance. And for me, there is a very clear and tender and intimate relationship between these tiny little white flowers and this young child. And they're also harbingers of spring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then, then we're up. We're up to the baby who'd and laughed and rocked the pram when I came in. What? What? Delia, I see you nodding in 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 assent. But uh, what what are you thinking? What are you thinking about? Well, here's somebody who's delighted to see this 14 year old. The one person who's just can't get over the joy of seeing him. And everyone else has a much more complicated feeling about this guy. And more, and, and I mean, all those cliches are just, are really just a sign of how hard it is to say what they really feel. And it's just, Gail, yeah. Well, and the speaker is narrating as if he, this is how he gradually learned what was happening, the clues. Why did Big Jim say that? And, you know, and then the, the baby being so delighted, there's sort of a ebullient, ebullient, and the, the movement and, of the poem. And really vigorous. Right. And rock the pram. I mean, this, this this baby is not just it's, smiling. It's, it's really excited. Yeah. Glee. Glee, yeah. And I was embarrassed. And it's a very interesting line break because we're not sure mm -hmm. what he was embarrassed about. The baby cooed and laughed and rocked the pram when I came in. And I was embarrassed. But he's embarrassed by old men, so the kind of the opposite of the babies, by old <clears throat> men standing up to shake my hand <clears throat> and, tell, and tell me, and beautiful, it's very qu quietly um, <clears throat> pointed about the way the poem moves. And standing up to shake my hand and tell me they were sorry for my quote sorry for my trouble so we're we're really being led into the next stanza you know by the lack of punctuation and uh let, let me also mention that i think something we need to think about is the form that the poem is in and the lines are more or less, and I mean that literally, more or less in iambic pentameter. They're in tercets in three line stanzas, which I, which I would love to have your, your take on, your opinion about. And, um, and the way that 
some of the lines are really in very regular iambic pentameter. And some of the lines are really kind of gnarly. And this is this is kind of what I, Bill, I don't I Bill Symes, I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> it's it's ex, it's it's almost exactly the thing that I wanted to hear what you had to say about and whether whether you noticed that and 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 what your feeling was about that, uh, I I did notice it um, that there's a variation between um, regular acatalectic lines and ones which are um, uh, yeah rather um, yeah gnarly is a good word for it. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure. I, I suppose it's it's um, a way of miming the the difficulty he experiences in um, finding words for his feelings, you know, the obliquity, which other people have commented on, the tendency to enumerate other people's feelings, but um, keep quiet about his own is suggestive of um, some uh, blockage or obstruction or difficulty he experiences in expressing feelings or coming to terms with the event. And that I suppose, registers at an acoustic level um, when the lines become gnarled. I, I don't know if you're thinking of something more specific than that. Oh, no, I'm, 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 it's something that I'm, I mean, some of it seems pretty straightforward to me and some of it feels more complicated. But the thing about counting bells, knelling classes, I mean, those every single syllable is accented at the beginning of the line and to me that reflects the the that that the the sort of deadness of the sound of the bells the dong 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 counting bells knelling classes classes to a close the yeah that, that line counting, tends towards the trachea count, i suppose doesn't yeah it? yeah and then the next line at two o'clock our neighbors drove me home which is very straightforward iambic yes. pentameter and just and and very regular and kind of normal and yes and, and, I, and su I suppose i suppose if he's all the while he's left alone he's um contending with his feelings um uh once he's in the car with the neighbors he's keeping right. up appearances and engaging right. in um, some kind of chit chat um, appropriate to the occasion, and the the line becomes regular, uh, regular in a sense as the private gives way to the socialized. Right, Lloyd. No, I think that's exactly right. Ted, yeah. I just have a question about movement right around the area that we're talking about. Yeah. So in the third stanza, I can read this at least three different ways. The second line. When I came in, I was embarrassed. And, and I, I was embarrassed. No, I know. That's why I'm doing this. Because oh, okay. I, okay. I want to find out what's going on here. When I came in, and I was embarrassed. When I came in, I was embarrassed. When I came in, and was embarrassed. So the only way that I can sort of structure meaning out of this is the emphasis on the I but we already know that it's him. So I'd be interested in having someone talk about the movement here, because I stumble a little bit there. There's a little stumble. Well, as I say, I, I think there, there is a kind of ambiguity about what he is embarrassed about. And- Don't you think it's, he's adolescent and the attention is turned to him? Yes. And he's and he just hasn't gotten his footing yet. Right. So you for a second you think he's embarrassed about the baby. I think he is. And he is. Yeah. Right. And yeah. he is, huh? but he's also moving to the thing that's much more explicitly an embarrassment by the old men standing up to shake his hand. Catherine, yeah. I think he didn't know what he was supposed to feel. Right. And when he saw the baby cooing, he that's not right. 
And then the old men coming and saying, that wasn't right either because he didn't get it yet. It, 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 he knew what had happened, but he didn't know how to respond in feelings. And so I think he was embarrassed by the baby and the old men and mainly embarrassed for himself that he wasn't doing it right. So I think the 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 complete to answer Ted's question may be the 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 the, the emphasis on the I and the emphasis on the sort of complete sentence when I came in and, and was embarrassed or it, it, it just it, but it's that it that comma it's the comma that throws you off. Right. Oh, Susan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the comma. Right. I was. Um, I want to say, in a Harry? way. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Oh, I'm thinking that in a way, the the, the eyes are almost two different, two different um, versions of the speaking self. There, the first sentence is so, is so, the first clause, uh, is so innocent. I mean, it could be. You could hear it in a very joyful context. The baby cooed. It's almost maybe there's even a little bit of warm, you know, it's heartwarming on some level, except for the context. Um, but it seems like that's the private eye who is the incredibly loved older sibling. But then the next eye, I, I like that he used the, uh, another eye there because that's almost like um, the public eye. And it's also, there's also a sense that he goes from beloved sibling to, um, to new man, right? They're shaking his hand. Um, so I felt that the private experience is bumping up against the public experience. I don't know if that's helpful, but. It um, is. It no, was. it is. I think that's definitely what's, what's, what's happening. Gail, yeah. yeah. I was just thinking of the excruciating self-consciousness of a 14-year-old boy and suddenly very somber behaving men are shaking his hand and sort of implying you're a man now. Yeah. But he's, you know, so he's almost a paternal figure to the baby because the baby is excited when the big brother comes home. And then... Um, He's 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 actually it's suddenly in between the roles in his life, in this in this poem. Indeed, that's what happens with the hand. Yeah. The hand is shaken by the older men, and then is in his mother's. Right, and he was oh. so embarrassing because he didn't know. Yeah. What either way. I mean, either yeah. way, that, you know, where does he belong as the boy whose mother is holding his hand? or the old men's uh, right yeah well, the the old men are, are condoling with him for a grief which he hasn't necessarily gotten around to feeling yet yeah well also and then the, the this the middle stanza of the of the middle line of that stanza is is just it seems to me such an an, an efficient um, uh, description of not only what's happening, um, but of what's happening in his mind, and that he this is something that he notices, and it's a very subtle thing. It seems to me it's a very subtle thing to notice, whispered in whispers informed strangers i was the eldest so he's he's obviously overhearing the whispers but he's also aware that they're whispering about him not you know directly to him and uh, that just seems um uh as i say there's something in, uh, um kind of breathtakingly efficient about what that line is doing and that it's both in his head 
and it's a kind of gen a wider description of of exactly you know exactly what that must be like for people to be talking about him not directly um, yeah and i think going back to his father crying yeah his father has has stopped being the grown up and he's he's now the man of the yeah. house and he doesn't want to be yeah and he doesn't want to be no, that, that's great yeah i think that's that's just right so you know? he, he, so he doesn't know who it is if it is if if his father had died they would be saying you're the man of the family now and he it would be excruciating to right that would oh, right right and then the mother so we've got the father and now it's the mother i was the eldest away whispers informed strangers i was the eldest away at school as my mother held as my mother held my hand in hers so he's that wh they're whispering about him being the eldest but then he's still the child because his mother is holding is holding his hand but Which, she having she's having her own difficult response to what what has happened and she is also holding his hand to comfort herself mm. You know, yeah. so he's he's in between there at fourteen too. Lloyd if Ellen she and her daughter, she could have cried, but she was a son. Oh yeah. Who is Ellen oh, and Marita? I'm sorry, Ellen and Jim wanted to. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Hear me? Okay. Yeah. I I I I can't I I can't find you suddenly. Oh. I'm here. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wanted want to, in this context of what we've been talking about, I want to go back to embarrassed uh, because oh. that word seems uh, also double edged in, in a way because he's at first talking about the baby and em embarrassed and in that way uh, he's laughing in the midst of this sadness. But he, I think he's also talking about being embarrassed by these men and his experience oh, of them. Oh, I agree with you completely. Uh, and so that that, you know, that uh, adds this kind of uh, addition to, the, you know, what he's going through, this, this double sense of embarrassment. I completely agree with you. Yeah. Yeah. I remember uh, an experience when I was in a prolonged adolescence with first grandparent who died and being at a service for him and uh, having a feeling something like embarrassment when uh, I um, the old man stood up to shake my hand and mouth a cliche. Right. And it's the, the cliche, I think, that he's reacting to, or that, that's at least part of his, his reaction. That you, you don't know exactly what, what in the world to do. Is it, this is in a, you feel in your own, the sincerity of your own reaction to the, you're suddenly dying, um, uh, uh, the, that this is the heartless. These people don't know what to say. They just to give you a cliche. What can you say? Yeah, right. Um, I think this also the the line describing what his mother is doing is also very complicated, and yeah. and it and it's really sort of it's Seamus Heaney noticing a lot of very complicated things in that in that moment my um my mother my mother held my hand in hers and coughed out angry tearless sighs and boy that's that that's a lot of stuff going on uh 
in 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 that moment. Um, uh, and very complicated and more complicated, I think more complicated, more complex, a more complex reaction than we expect. She's not just crying. She's not just sad, but she's angry. And she's not, she's not weeping. Um, and yeah, and 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 I I think Gail, you were saying this earlier about you know it's he 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 is the his mother is kind of hanging on to him. Um, I yeah. think this poem is so much about the end of his childhood and sort of being rushed into manhood, and and I think that's a point one of the points in the poem where he can never he'll never turn back you know he's not he's not he's not going to be a boy anymore he's he's a man is that another meaning of the title mm -hmm. uh, uh, that this midterm is a break in his, the break you just described in his life which we thinking only of it as a <clears throat> semester mm -hmm. we had thought it was misleading mm -hmm. about the subject of the poem is, is that clear what I said? Yeah. It's great. Yeah, yeah it's great. Yeah. And and it seems like and you're 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 just reminding me what I thought about the title. The title seemed so meaningful and so understated. And then when you think about what you just said, it's it's a really powerful title. It, it's the, the break from sort of pubescence to manhood being sudden. Very loaded. It seems so understated. And it's it's yeah. it's yeah. very, it's very, very full. Right. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not called the day my brother died. Right. You know? right. <laughs> right. Or loss. Or yeah. yeah, right. At 10 o'clock, the ambulance arrived. And it's just, you know, of course, he's noticing that mm -hmm. as he's been noticing. You've pointed this out before that he's he's not his he's been noticing the, the hours. Uh, Michael, yeah. A subtle thing which struck me on second or third reading is that the baby in the baby's reaction to him tells us something about his relation with his four-year-old brother. That a baby who is that excited to see 14, I thank the person who gave me that age to context things, would also have been delighted and beloved of his four-year-old. And this wasn't a distant brother. This was a brother who was in deep beloved relation with his ch fellow siblings. Yeah, that's, that's right. And then, th then the next line is really pretty, I mean, is, is kind of shocking. With the corpse. The. Again, it, Mary? He just said the. This is going to be your line. No, no. Okay. <laughs> no, I, 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 I like that the also, but. Well, the but nurse. The, I think there's a there's a. To me, there's okay, a more. Sorry. Okay. No, 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 no. You're you're absolutely. I I left. Suspense is reach. killing me. <laughs> I left. <laughs> Suspense will soon be over. <laughs> but the corpse. Uh. And um, that's just shocking. And, and, and also, isn't that also, he's not saying with my brother's body. He's also making that as externalized as possible, as, as clinical as possible with the corpse 
stanched and bandaged by the nurses. Um, and that's well, actually, that's not what he thought at the time. Right. No, it, it's um, as he, that's the adult Seamus suddenly. Well, it's also it's also a very interesting line rhythmically. It's very unsettled rhythmically, with the corpse stanched and bandaged by the nurses. It's 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 kind of all over the place in terms of the general iambic pentameter of the poem. The the, the poem is doing da 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 da, but here it's doing da 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 da. It's it's just it it it's very unsettled rhythmically. With yeah. this, this, the um, intense adult expressions of the adult who is telling this story now, yeah. you know, I mean, you can't see a kid saying the corpse was stanched and bandaged. You can see him saying the corpse, but stanched and bandaged is. Mary, well, here been, it comes. <laughs> I just realized it's yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yes. <laughs> so, what? Tell me. <laughs> the room. The room. The room. It's yeah. Painful. Mm. Not it's his room. room. Yeah. Not his room. Mm. Not the not the child's room, but just the room. And I th I think that the is just um. Mm -hmm. Well, devastating. <laughs> yeah. Um, mm. Next morning, I went up into the room. Snowdrops. It's just a, it's a really. This mm. is it, this is just so the poem is just so skillfully written, and you know, and 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 aside from all the reverberations, which of course are what make it a great poem, but. It, it's also very skillfully written and um, and sort of beautifully put together in terms of what you can do with a, a, a line of poetry. Next morning, I went up into the room, snowdrops. I mean, that, that putting snowdrops on on that line is just also so it seems to me so expressive and and poignant and and beautiful. There's a lot of O's in that line. Yeah. That that's yeah. into next morning into the room snowdrops and candles soothed. And there's more O's coming up, and candles soothed the bedside. I saw him, I saw him, not I saw my brother, I, there's no, again, no information. I saw him for the first time in six weeks. And then I, I just, there's something just uncanny, paler now, he still, can't can't bring himself to 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 actually say what's just to say explicitly what's what's happened paler now wearing a poppy bruise on his left temple he lay in the four foot box as in his cot So he's just asleep. He's just asleep. No gaudy scars. The bumper knocked him clear. Oh. So now we know, and we, 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 the, the, his brother was, was killed by a car. And oh. Yeah, he was killed by a car. He was hit by a car. Catherine, you're surprised, and why? Bumper. Why are you surprised? Bumper, bumper is bumper is part of a crib. 
So I thought he fell out of his crib and he knocked his head falling out of his crib. Oh, uh, no, it was he was hit by a car. So it wasn't mom's fault. OK, right. It wasn't. <laughs> right. right. Uh, oh. Um, thanks, Michael. Interesting. Hume. Yeah. Yeah. Hume. So I, I just I, something stood out for me just now and going over this again, which is that he must have seen something at 10 o'clock the previous evening. That's only when he goes up to the room that he really has a more intimate uh, right. view of his brother. And so, so that's, that's why he says he saw him for the first time in six weeks, even though he'd seen him in some sense as a corpse the previous evening. Oh, right. Yeah, I, I thought that this, I saw him for the first time in six weeks, sort of undoes the corpse. I mean, the corpse, when he says, I saw him for the first time in six weeks, there's as if this is continuous, you know, as if I'm home from school and I haven't seen him in six weeks. Um, so in that next morning stanza, he's alive again to him, to the speaker. Yeah. And the same thing with Paler now. It's not I, for him that there's a corpse and there was a brother, I, but this is continuous. I, and where and wearing. Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah. I saw him paler now and wearing a poppy bruise. Yes, same thing. Yeah. And, but he didn't wake up. Right. Yeah. That's the difference. That's the difference. He lay in the four foot box as in his cot. So again, it's it's it's, yeah. it's he's really he's it's like it's as if he were alive. Mm. No gaudy scars. The bumper knocked him clear. And then I mean what what's ha just I think I well, let me ask you, because we've talked about it a little bit, but what what makes that last line, what are some of the things that make that last line so extraordinary and, and power? Jonathan. What, uh, it left me questioning, and then I had to go back and ask the same question about the rest of the poem is, is our, at that point, are we hearing from the the adult narrator or is it actually the 14 year old who observed that it was a fort that was a foot for every year yeah it, it's it's a, it's not a, something you'd expect a 14 year old right. to come up with um but he has spent yeah, the, the, the 14 year old has spent the whole poem counting things i think also um the fact that we've left the tercets which move us forward instead of enclosing us and now we're we're out of that action and i think i think we are an adult now and i i think we're looking back yeah, I, I i i i i i think that that's i share that someone is else it, had it yeah, yeah. I, is is it I don't, I'm reluctant to say this almost. Is it, is it almost like a, a bad joke or no. ironic? A teenage joke? No. I, I think it's, no. It's, it's sort of, in a way, a certain way, an understated, kind of almost brave, as, as if he's not. Seamus the poet only, but Seamus the 14 year old. Yeah. Self permission to say that that's the, that's the story. That's the story. It's simply this. It's almost all monosyllabic. Almost every is it. And it's sort of so it, that has, it has a very syllab, monosyllabic feel. Wow. So that's, that's what it is. That's, that's what it ended up being. That's what my brother ended up being. Mary? Oh, yeah, I was just going to add, um, 
uh, but it's it seems like the closest he comes to articulating the tragedy of the poem as if it's taken him the whole poem to get to the point where the youth of this corpse and I don't know there's just something about the box I mean it you don't see the corpse it's a box it's a kind of a mathematical way of describing the tragedy but um but I love everybody's what everybody's been saying about it's it's, it's kind of like a new voice entering but at the same time it's not what it. else is what else is new about the last line? There's something no one's mentioned. It yet. rhymes. Yeah. Yes. Um, and and what, I think that links the past story story to the present. I got it. He, he's saying it really it, it's clear and year. But right. I, it's still clear. Still a year. Yeah. That's it. Oh uh, 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 Ruth, yeah. Yeah, the box, the box confines him. He will forever be no more than four feet. Um, yeah. He will always be confined by that box. It, it puts a physical limit on his life. Everything in the poem is sort of moving. The poem keeps moving. But the last line really brings the poem to a stop. Mm. And it brings it to a stop because it's its own stanza. And it brings it to a stop because it's the only thing in the poem that rhymes. And that just, that's it. And, and, and that's it for... Lloyd, what you're saying is almost... You can almost see it, maybe wordlessly. That's what Seamus is thinking when he's writing it. That's it. A foot for every year. That's that's what it is now. The box. Right. Right. And isn't the... I don't want to be too clever about this, but isn't the palm a kind of box? <laughs> We're not supposed to be laughing. Wait a second. Uh, John. Yeah, I, I remember very, very vividly when I first read this poem in 1984. Oh, and God. when I got to the end of it, I really felt as if uh, Haney had just slammed my head with a hammer. And so that I felt the blow that the child had, that the, uh, the hard blow that big Jim Evans was talking about. And it sort of brings us to into the poem to see a number of sides of it. And um, it's wonderful how he does that. But to go off on a tangent now, I really am not finished talking about the grief in the poem. That there's so much to talk about. And this ties in with that hammer blow and that everyone in the family is grieving privately, and yet they're very intimate together. And it just shows that their grief is isolating them completely from each other. And that kind of uh, grief really is almost like you're standing at the edge of the world and you don't know what's gonna happen or how to feel and you're untethered from yourself <coughs> and your family. And I mean, it's just one of those really strange <laughs> emotional moments uh, of isolation that, that we feel, we see in them, and then we feel that. And it is just so powerful. I mean, and, and, I mean you think about the, 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 his hand and his mother's yeah. hand, and you think that was a moment of kind of tenderness and, and communication, but it's not. I mean, or maybe that, but it's also there's something desperate about what the mother is feeling, yeah. what she needs. She's she's not really consoling her yeah. son, and so, he's not consoling her. She's beyond grief. I mean, she is. She's right. not crying. The father is crying. The father who never cried before is now crying. The roles are reversed, and she is in shock, basically, 
as is everyone in that family, except for the cooing child, which is sort of anchoring the family. And that um, line yeah. brings Seamus not only into adulthood, but into, into his grief. That last, that last line. It's you know, very sort of being, being he's he's toughening, toughening himself in the writing of in the in the concluding the poem. He's taking a breath and saying, "This is what it was. This is what it is." I think that last line is really. It's you. You almost can't analyze it because it it just I for me it hits me so hard that I'm, I'm, I mean, I can, and I can talk about, you know, the, in, in, the genius of having it as a separate stanza and as a rhyme word and, and just technically I can talk about it, but it's so powerful. I can't really analyze. I mean, we, we can all talk about it and we should, and I'm glad we we are. But it's almost beyond what ha it's so it's such a simple line, and and <laughs> that, that it's it's just it's devastating. He's devastated and he's manning up at the same time and writing that line, you know, like that's the blunt, monosyllabic, internal rhyme line that sort of he's now not fourteen anymore. He's not a boy. He can't be a boy again. Uh, two things. Um, I don't know if you talked about Poppy. My computer crashed for a bit in the middle. Oh, no, we, we haven't actually. Because it's the war. It's such a gaudy color. Um, uh -huh. and, and it's also later in the summer. And it's such a, it's such a contrast to... Um, uh, the snowdrops, and Snow yet yeah. he doesn't. He doesn't say bloody, you know, or brute. Right. Uh, you know, he doesn't use a a word that <clears throat> that bruises are. You know, ugly, ugly blue black. I mean, whatever green, greenish. But he picks the a color that is what what the child isn't going to get to. Mm. So what they look like. And, and I had a question about the, about the um, the 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 line that he lay in the four foot boxes in his cot, which is all mo monosyllables, and and then you get to every year that you can you as though you can encompass it with a full stop every year, the every overpowers the the skillfulness of the monosyllables, I think. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, you're not there. The new one. And then every year is so, it's so sad so that sad. every year is only four years. Yeah. Oh, but the every year is his memory. It is his memory. His memory. Yeah. It's well, it's actually a slightly odd word. <clears throat> I mean, it would be a foot for each year. Every every does something different. Partly, you know, uh, sonically, you wouldn't want to hear each in that place. But it it's a misdirected word. No, I mean, misdirected just in terms of actually counting every year, every year that's left, all the years, you know. But that, that there's something that this is a whole life. That's why I like it. Yeah, I I agree. I, I but I, each, I, but each would have been the the precise word. I know, but we we're so glad it wasn't. Yep. <laughs> I think oh, every year, every year, every year seems the, in a, in some way, the 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 real lament in the poem. 
Yeah. 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 That every year. And every year is just this package now of four years in a row. Mm-hmm. There's a tenderness in every almost that suggests almost a treasuring, whereas each each is a little it misses that somehow. I wanted to just say something really quickly, if I can, about the poppy. Oh, sure, please. Poppies do come in in actually a whole range of colors. And white poppies are very um are very common. Actually, we tend to think of them as the scarlet flower. But they do tend to have a like a darkening near the center of the petals, almost a, like a bruised-ish color. So going with the paler, I don't know if it's if it's helpful or not. But I found it hard to see. I first saw the scarlet, you know, petal, and that it didn't seem to fit. So I thought, oh, you know, maybe he's imagining a a white. It, it's also how the veterans are remembered. In England, particularly. Right. Yeah. Right. Catherine? Yeah, it's just, it's it's what everybody buys in November. White, white or red. Does, does I, that I, happen I, in America too? No. No, no, no we no. don't do it that way. <laughs> no, we, we don't. <laughs> the opium poppy is actually a kind of livid purple, or can be. Mm. Very bruisey in, in color. Yeah. But again, I'm I I want to go back to every for a second, and <laughs> it's so padding. I think that I'm sorry. It, it, it's such a padding word. Every you almost do that, but I I think it's every year are the years that he remembers. Yes, yes, like the poppy. It's every year for the poet. Yeah, and for the child. Yeah. Yehudi, yes. Every, forever. Oh, yeah. Oops. Yeah. Somebody yeah, called. that's very... Thank <laughs> you. Um, this yeah. older brother, this older brother is a survivor. And uh, every year he has this loss for the rest of his life. Every year. And and this poem was not written when Seamus Heaney was 15. Right. Every it was year. written as an as an adult. And every. and that he is really uh, reliving that experience when he was, you know, however many, well, he's, I, the poem was written in 69. And I don't remember when Seamus Heaney was born. 39. 39. So he's, th- he, he's around 30 when he writes this poem. And 30 was older then. I'm sorry? 30 was more mature then. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Bill, were you going to say something? Um, uh, yeah, I, I, it's a, probably an idle thought. Um, I, I was just, uh, um, just thinking that um, uh, it, it's slightly odd for an Irishman, particularly the Irishman Heaney was to grow into um, to be appropriating um, a poppy commemorating Britain's war dead, because the the Irish, uh, Irish Catholics, uh, in particular, I suppose, um, would have uh, um, a, a kind of ambivalence about um, uh, wars fought by Britain. I mean, one thinks I'm not that Yeats was a Catholic, but one thinks of Yeats as an Irish airman foresees his death, um, uh, and there the the involvement of an Irishman in the war is. is um, uh, rather peculiar, isn't it? Because he's uh, fighting for a country uh, for well, which he harbors no. Sorry. Yeah, but but Seamus wasn't Catholic. He was from Northern Ireland. Yes, but um, he, no, he, of course he was Catholic. Um, he was from the north, but he was part of yeah. the Catholic minority. Yeah, he was the school he was in was a Catholic college. Yeah, the, the one no, that I'm he's brought away from. from 
well think about um you know two or three this is from death of a naturalist but two or three volumes on when I run ironically he moves south of the border and starts living in Wicklow and writes north the poems which engage with the troubles um you know in poems like punishment uh, for example you know he's pretty sympathetic to the IRA you know he's um uh verging on endorsing the tarring and feathering of a, a Catholic girl who makes the mistake of sleeping I, with I, a British squaddy but I I, I want to do that poem in the poem. yes yes <laughs> right um uh, uh, um so it's in a way he he borrows the poppy and the notion of um, commemoration because it serves his purposes, but it must have been a slightly <coughs> gesture for him because I'm not sure that he would have easily worn poppies. And um, of course, you know, it about I don't know. I think it's about 15 years ago people started wearing white poppies as in on Armistice Day as a way of, um, uh, in a sense, uh, commemorating the war dead and recording one's gratitude while simultaneously. Um, distancing oneself from anything bellicose, I suppose. But um, yeah. Uh, uh, one other thing I thought about is that once we learn that the um, uh, the child has been knocked over by um, uh, someone, a driver, um, uh, we, we wonder: do we are we sent back a little bit to the? undirected in Kuwait anger of the mother we, we never quite know what she's angry with with fate with God with the driver I don't know whether the driver was a hit and run driver I don't know the details of this um, um, but really I, I think all of the above yeah yeah I think all, all of that and that she hasn't really I mean she's angry at at, at everything yeah, sure, uh, sure. And um, and probably herself. I don't. I mean, I, I don't want to be, um, be judgmental or censorious. But um, yeah. what was a four-year-old doing out on the street to get knocked down by a car? I can't help thinking, just for a moment. I, I, yeah. I, I'm sure. Uh, um, so maybe anger with herself for exposing the child to danger as well. All possible. Sure. Yeah. Ellen, do we, you look like you on the verge of say of saying something. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Catherine, well, uh, when it, it, it says, um, unless you're talking with the other Catherine, um, when she's angry, it's in the sentence with he was away at school. And I wondered if she was in some way angry at the oldest boy for being away when this awful thing happened. And I would say, as a simple thing, all moms would feel angry at themselves if their child gets hit by a car. Whatever whatever happened, all mothers would take it on themselves, I would think. Yeah. yeah. Uh, furious at the driver, no doubt, as well. The, the yeah. unseen, you know, almost non-existent driver. Uh, but the, fur he, the driver's in some way unknown, and that her child was available to be hit was her fault. She would just take it that way. You know, even if he was playing with dad or, you know, I, you can think of 1,200 reasons why the child would have been outside, but it doesn't matter. She'd well, feel responsible. But the in the poem, it's that Seamus Heaney, that the poet, thinking back to his teenage years at that moment he he can't he can't point <clears throat> it out but he's aware that she's feeling something really complicated and and anger is 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 part of that um oh, any other boy. any other yes you have I to go oh I was uh, just the rhythm of the poem going oh, from the mystery to the to, and to the thing, the corpse as a thing staunched and bandaged to the way Seamus comes to 
seeing it as the child uh, soothed there and and the personal um affect of all of that that then ends up with the four foot box a foot forever forever more forever year um i find just extraordinary to go through all the social things the corpse as a thing and then to see his little brother as if he's just lying there for the first time um, he saw him in six weeks it's just extraordinary sorry I just well, I, I'm dragging the conversation down a bit I just wondered if um, during Heaney's time at Harvard you, your paths had crossed um, whether you knew him yeah we we, we we did he was very oh. he was very social and very um he gave uh, a lot of readings uh yeah. gail had him read at the blacksmith house for a, a benefit for plowshares magazine he read and he would uh, come a number he would of times too sorry he was showing yeah. things too reading mm. yeah and he went to things he read, I'm one of the things that I, you know, that I really loved about him. He, I, I was teaching at, at, at UMass Boston, a public college, and we managed to raise $500 for him to give a reading. And he gave a wonderful reading and then refused to accept the money because he knew we needed it more than he did. Uh, if he'd won the Nobel Prize by then, he'd have been rich though, wouldn't he? <laughs> Yes, but he he he, yeah, he, no, he, hadn't, he hadn't. All right, a whole, I have a wonderful story which I don't have time to tell you now, but ah. I can I can tell you individually oh. uh, about Seamus reading at UMass Boston at the exact same time that Jesse Jackson was giving a uh, a talk a, a kind of. Uh, political talk when he was running for president oh, right. and and that they met <laughs> on the in the stairwell coming oh, down to the garage and um <laughs> well and anyway the punchline of the story is that when the publicist the pub, young publicity woman for for umass boston introduced jesse jackson to seamus heaney in the stairwell yeah, he it. shook my hand. <laughs> <laughs> love it. And then she said, no, 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 not him. <laughs> him. It's so funny. And Seamus uh, uh, was there with his, with, with his wife and they were, they couldn't stop laughing. <laughs> just, just hilarious. So he was, he was a really lovely presence. Okay. Uh, One very quick comment. Uh, yes, there is yes. another poem about his brother's death, uh, The Blackbird of Glanmore. And it's interesting to read that uh, in relation to this poem. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll look for that. I've it's forgotten. short and it's, it's, yeah, you can get it on the web. The Blackbird of Glanmore. Thank you. Blackbird of what? Glanmore, G-L-A-N-M-O-R-E. Thank you. And, I'd, for, I'd thank forgotten you. that. Ellen and Jim have their hand raised. Please. Um, I just, uh, Seamus Heaney was a, a good friend of my late, uh, late wife, Adele, uh, and the, who was head of Irish studies at Boston College, and he read there frequently. Um, and in fact, when she was dying, he wrote a poem about, uh, about her and her death. Uh, oh. uh, what there. was the name of the, do you remember the name of the poem? Bridget's girdle. Thank you, <laughs> Ellen. Remember Bridget's girdle. It's in the volume called Hall Lantern. Uh, uh, anyway, it's powerful. So great. Thank you. Yes, we we sh we should all be reading more Seamus Heaney. But I think I think um, punishment is 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 definitely on our 
<laughs> I shouldn't say it that way. <laughs> but the, the <laughs> saying punishment is def definitely on the agenda for the for, for the fall. But you it's, it's, it's such on, bad news in such sweet way. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 I think I think that poem is real. It's a, a, a really great poem, and that we should. I'd be very interested in hearing what you had to say about it. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you all so much, Marita. Thank you for hosting these readings. Um, have a great summer, everyone. Um, Mary, I got your message. I, <laughs> um, and um, Susan. What? Yes, John. I have one question, and I want to ask Michael Scudder. <clears throat> are those boxes behind you? Are they filled with Trump's uh, classified <laughs> documents? <laughs> it seems very suspicious. <laughs> you don't have to. Computer you report. don't have to answer that, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you for your just um, deep intelligence and sensitivity and for your sense of humor. And I really, uh, those of you whom I don't know or you know haven't met or only know slightly, it's been great getting to know you better through through the poems that we talk about. Likewise. And, and um, my, my, my old friends who are participants, it's really great it's great to be able to talk about poems with you. We don't get to do that very, very often. Um, and again, thank Marita, you. Thank, thank you for, 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 for have a good summer, everyone. Toast, and have a, have a wonderful break, everyone. <laughs> thank you, everyone, and thank you, Lloyd. And really, these discussions are so beautiful. So it's a wonderful to be a part of it. So don't anyone leave. We'll be back.